Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Chuck Hoffaker. He's a veterinarian at the University of Georgia. Chuck, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, coccidiosis gets a lot of attention as a poultry disease, but when you think about food safety, there's also salmonella. But I guess your research has shown that there can sometimes be a connection between the two. Yes, since salmonella is a bacteria that lives within the cecum of the chicken, there are certain coccidial species that also live in the cecum. And so the cohabitation of the protozoa coccidia with the bacteria salmonella has been shown to give salmonella a competitive advantage whenever the coccidia causes damage so they can colonize to a higher level. And would it be a certain strain of salmonella that would interact more with coccidiosis than others? Um, that, we really don't know that answer. We, we've looked at uh, salmonella heidelberg. Uh, there's been some work with salmonella aniriditis and typhimarium, but we don't know if it's any particular serovar that is more at risk of being affected to be at a higher level with uh, coccidia. Now, what about coccidiosis? There are several different Imeria right. uh, varieties. Uh, has have any of those shown to have more interaction with salmonella? The, the different Imeria species live in different spots in the intestine. And Imeria tenella is the primary one that lives in the cecum. And what it appears is that as the tenella causes disease, at a low level, Imeria tenella will actually make it more difficult for salmonella to colonize. And, and we've looked at that as an advantage with usage of a, of a controlled exposure like a coccidia vaccine. But unchecked exposure to coccidia so that the, the infection becomes large, then that gives salmonella a competitive advantage and it then will cause disease or cause a higher in, infection of salmonella. So you mentioned coccidiosis vaccine. Are there ter certain types of management programs for coccidiosis that might do a better job of also keeping salmonella in check? What we've seen is that having a controlled exposure early like we get with the coccidia vaccine caused the, the salmonella to not colonize and shed at as great a level. Whereas with a, an anti-coccidial drug that, is, that allows the immunity to develop because of slow leakage, I think what happens is the, the slow leakage of the coccidia over time probably gives the salmonella a different uh, chance to cause and, or colonize and grow to higher levels than all at once exposure as we get with a vaccine at a day of age. Now we have some um, poultry producers in the industry that are uh, going antibiotic free. Um, does that increase the opportunity for salmonella and other foodborne pathogens? No, not necessarily. Uh, a lot of those, those companies that go antibiotic free, particular times a year, they're going to use a coccidial vaccine in their program. Uh, and then other times a year, they'll use a, a chemical coccidia stat, which it, most of the time, those chemical coccidia stats are very effective at controlling coccidia so that the, the coccidia don't have an opportunity to really grow much at all. So that, all, that also keeps the salmonella from having that opportunity. So in the, generally in, in climates like southeastern United States, we're going to use a coccidial vaccine when the temperature warms up in the late spring, summer, and early fall. And if the vaccine is applied right and we get good immunity, then it appears from the work that we've done that that may give us an actual benefit to, to keeping salmonella from colonizing. Is there a seasonal pattern at all to salmonella? In humans, the vast majority of the outbreaks occur during the summer. And we, we really don't fully understand that. We think it's probably associated with people's eating behavior more than it is due to the chicken and the chicken shedding more salmonella. And, and say greater levels of salmonella on poultry. Probably due to our barbecue habits and leaving food sitting out on the picnic table and that sort of thing. And it's, it's seen all throughout the world, even in South America where the, below the equator where their summer is, is during our winter, they see an increase during their summer. 
what else can producers do to manage salmonella effectively in their flocks? Uh, there's a lot of things that, it, that we can do, and that is to go all the way back to the breeders and vaccinate the breeders with a live vaccine when they're, when they're young pullets, and then a, a killed vaccine at, at 10 uh, to 12, and then 18 to 20 weeks, G giving those maternal antibodies to the baby chick in the egg. When the chick hatches, they've got antibodies so that when they're placed on the litter, they can resist colonization. That's a, that's a big, one of the big steps that we can use for salmonella control. We can also vaccinate broilers with live vaccine. And in, in some instances where I've worked with companies that have had outbreaks traced back to their product, we have gone into broilers and vaccinated with live vaccines. And that, that has helped dampen down the amount of salmonella going to the processing plant. What about management practices and biosecurity? Is there any, are there any steps that producers can take there? Definitely. The salmonella can live in, in the beetles that are on the farms. They can live in the rodents, um, flies. So you know, though, keeping those pests at bay, um, good pest control. Also, uh, salmonella can survive for very long periods of time in poultry house dust. They've done studies that it'll survive years in that dust. So if we had a particular salmonella cerevar that we we're concerned about, then, and it was in a, a known, known on a farm, then we could clean, disinfect, and, and reduce the level. It's very hard to, diff it's very difficult to eliminate salmonella completely. I, I, I never want anyone to think that we're going to have salmonella free. We're going to reduce salmonella. Uh, there's more than 2,500 cerevars of salmonella. All animal species um, could be uh, carriers. Chickens don't normally get sick from salmonella. It's just part of their normal intestinal flora. And so, um Looking to the future, uh, do you have any more research planned that's focused on salmonella? Looking at a lot of alternative products for, for use against salmonella, the probiotics, um, using organic acids, uh, things that are natural antibacterial that'll inhibit salmonella growth. Uh, as we move into the new era of controls on antibiotics, uh, I think we're going to have to look at some of these types of products in, in the future for control of salmonella. Well, we'll look forward to uh, hearing those results. We've been talking to Chuck Hoffaker, he's a veterinarian at the University of Georgia. Chuck, it's always a pleasure, thank you. It's my pleasure, thank you. I thought that went well.